Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Now before we get started, if anyone out there has a story they'd like to share on this show, you can contact me at brentonson at gmail.com. If you want to contribute to help with the show, you can go to a link in the description, PayPal me, and it's super easy to use, one step, and that's all it really takes. And I appreciate every contribution that I've gotten, so thank you to those who have uh, made a contribution. And uh, and I know I haven't uh, posted here in a, a little bit. It's been like three weeks or something. I've had a few medical issues that I've had to deal with. and uh, But, you know, I'm doing better now, so I'm back, and uh, I'm going to get uh, several shows back-to-back. -back. Um, so be looking for, you know... Uh, a show every day for for a little while I'm, i'll try to get something every day uh you know it might not be possible to get something every single day but there'll be several shows i'll catch up before the end of this month on what should have been already posted but uh today we have something really interesting um a uh, fella uh his name is matt and he's got this really bizarre story that i was just fascinated with when i heard about it and I'm going to let Matt introduce himself, and then we'll just get into his story. And I think you're going to really find this interesting. Um, hey, Matt, uh, if you would, buddy, just introduce yourself and, and uh, tell where you're from uh, as much as you want to hone in on the area and, how, you know, what have you. And then uh, and we'll get into your story. All right. Thank you, Brenton. I appreciate it, and I'm a huge fan of the show. Uh, thank you, bud. So... So I'll just start by saying that I'm Matt, and I live in Lake County, Illinois, which is the most northeastern county in Illinois, and right next to Lake Michigan. And it is Native American land. All of that is Native American land. Illinois itself is a Native American name. So I'll give you a little bit of my background. I'm, I'm just a, you know, a laborer, construction laborer, normal guy, live in, uh, you know, live in a kind of a rural area. And I live on a property that's been in my family for about since the 1930s. And this forest was, it was pretty much planted by my grandfather. And when he came out of the woods, he came out with hundreds of arrowheads. So fast forward a few decades. I've been living there since 1997. And it's about 20 acres but it's also adjoined by a lot of other fields. So it kind of, it kind of adds up to about 50 or 60 acres. And it's also right next to a national airport, which is actually what made this sighting so unusual is that it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. So I'll just get right to it. This was in 2012. I had my best friend who had been camping for an extended amount of time in my woods. And he just really loved nature. So he had been out there quite a while, for a few weeks. And it is big enough, the woods, where you can walk through and not run into anybody. And we also have a main trail that goes through the woods, a big, wide main trail that we maintain. And so... He calls me one morning from the woods. He wakes up, has his cell phone, calls me, tells me we have an intruder. And I've had them in the past, trespassers in the woods. So my house is only about, I don't know, 100 yards from the forest. So I was out there pretty quick, within one minute. And well, maybe a couple minutes. Out there pretty quick. And I met my friend Stephen on the trail. And he's telling me that he saw a white, a, a skinny white guy dressed in a blue and gray shirt with jeans coming around the bend in a trail as he was coming around the bend. It's kind of a turn, and you can't really see the person in front of you until you're just directly in front of him. So he saw just the side of him and really didn't see his face. But as soon as the of this guy knew that, that he, Stephen was there, he bolted into the woods. I mean, he shot into the brush as fast as lightning. So this is when Steve called me, and he said, you have a trespasser in the woods. 
So I'm out there, and we're looking around, just standing on the trail, looking around, scanning the woods, and I see a naked man crouched down about 30 feet in front of us in this kind of thick brush, because it's, it's brushy off the trail, and he he's crouched with his knees to his chest. And his arms, his arms were extended out over his knees and his torso pressed down against his thighs with his head down, face down between his knees. So we could not see his face, but I could see his rib muscles, his shoulder muscles. I, he looked like a white man, very thin white man, very small framed. And he had jet black scraggly hair to his shoulders. Looked like it had not been washed in years. And I thought about this later that his hair kind of looks Native American. But I didn't, this didn't come to me until, until later on. So we still think this is a trespasser at this point. We still think this is a person hiding from us. So we start yelling at him. We tell him, hey, we're going to call the cops. You're a trespasser. You're, you know, we're going to call the cops. You have to get out of here. We see you. He did not flinch an inch. I mean, he didn't even budge a muscle. I mean, it, it, he didn't even move at all. It, it didn't bother him, period. So me and Steven looked at each other, and we told each other, let's get him. Let's charge him. Because he's only 30 feet in front of us. I mean, he's not far at all. <laughs> Sorry. So... We look at each other and we say, let's charge him. And me and him put our first step into that brush. And it happened so quick. It was just so strange. He, his thighs and his rib muscles coalesced together. Like it was so smooth. It was so strange. He, he just seemed to all coalesce together in like a fluid motion. And he turned, he turned like a tannish blob, like a tannish brown blob. He kind of like sand color. And it formed kind of this body, a long, you know, brown body. Then all of a sudden, where his butt was, where the backside of him was, a deer's head popped up. Then the deer stood up. The deer shook itself off, kind of gave itself a little shake looking straight at us, by the way. This, and it, it looked like a perfect deer. I would have swore this was a deer if I saw it in the woods. So he, it kind of shook itself off and slowly walked off, looking at us the whole time. So now, me and Steve... When, when said, you first, when, I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you first told okay. me about this, you said that the uh, it turned into like, a, uh, a, 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 like an amoeba-type blob. And then uh, something jutted out from it, and then it shook and turned into the head. Yeah, it was kind of like amorphous. Like, at first it had no shape. Right, and then a, and then a part it, blobs out, and then it shakes, and then turns into the head. Is that kind of how it happened, or, or uh, am I, you know... Well, I, I mean... Well, it, it, it kind of... I thought it kind of shook when the head popped up. But I mean, I'm just, I'm just so taken aback by this that uh, it just, I don't know. I, I just struggle with this to this day. I just don't understand how this is possible. But it kind of like it was amorphous at first, and then it coalesced together, and then, I, and then I believe that's when it shook up or when the head popped up because the head popped up kind of behind like some brushy branches. I didn't see the head form at all. I just saw the body form. So when the head kind of kind of popped up, it, you know, I think that's when it shook itself off a little bit and kind of kind of like it was getting comfortable with being a deer. It, it, it just, oh, God, I just, I just struggle with this to this day. But it, it tried to, like, make us think it was normal. Like, we thought it was a deer, and we thought, okay, that's just a deer. It's it's almost like it tried to make us forget. 
it's so strange that I just don't have any words to describe it. It's just, I don't know. I'm getting kind of spooked out just talking about it. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, but, that's very interesting, man. It, um, I mean, just the way you explained it that, that, that first time you were saying that uh, it turned into kind of like a blob, and then it was like a, something kind of popped out that was about the size of a head, and then it shook and transformed into the deer head and then transformed into the deer. Um, but be, e either way, I mean, who cares how it happened? It happened. You, you know you yeah, were looking I, at a man, and then it turned into a deer. Yeah. You know, so I mean, he's like, golly, and, what can you think And that's that? what happened. Right, and that's what happened afterwards is when we kind of walked off after a few seconds thinking, okay, it was just a deer. And then, like, we, me and Steven literally broke out of it, grabbed each other, and said, that was a man at first, okay? And then we, it just, it kind of, it, it like, put, put a trance on us. I just don't, under, I don't know how to explain it. It's like it pulled, like, it's, you know, like it's last trick out of its bag. Because this thing did not want us to see us. It, 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 it knew it messed up when, it, when we happened upon it. So that tells me it makes mistakes. And, I mean, I don't know. It's just so bizarre, Brenton. I just, I just, I, I, and I'm a Christian. You know, I'm a Christ-believing Christian. And I've been kind of struggling with putting this into the framework of the world. You know? Right, right. You know, um, uh, the one thing that I, I, that made me kind of think about as you, you, you talk about that part on where it tried to make you think that you didn't see that, you know, kind of deal. Um, right. Is that I, I know someone who, no, a few people I've talked to who seen like a, uh, a UFO. And right. after they saw it, they, they swore that there kept being thoughts projected to them that was saying, you didn't see it. You didn't see it. You, you know, trying to make them forget. It, 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 it was like a... And it, they were, like, battling with it and saying, no, I did see that. And then there would be a thought projected back saying, no, you didn't see that. You're going to forget it. That, and that, and that kind of a, thing. So it makes me wonder if there's a spiritual aspect going on with what you saw. And, and that's exactly what happened to us. It felt like some outside foreign force was, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's, it didn't really wasn't a thought. It was more like it was trying to make me think it was just a deer, and it and we we it but, did. But it the, really tried to make us think it was normal. Yeah, but the thought came from outside of you. It didn't. It wasn't like originating in you. You know, kind of thing. Right. Like, I don't believe it like, was. Right. Yeah, man, that is fascinating. That that that's what makes you think it's spiritual, and um. From what you know, from what you're saying, it sounds really very, very similar to stuff that J.C. Johnson used to cover about skinwalkers, um, where they would go through these ritual type things, and then they could change into uh, different animals, whatever kind of animal they chose, you know. Uh, right. And and uh, and it's a very spiritual type thing. And and there's a lot of. Uh, did you have like fear or um, did it have a a, a feeling of uh, like evil to it? No, and no. That's the thing I also wanted to tell you that I absolutely never got that feeling. Really? Because I've I've I, I've had other you know kind of encounters in my life where I've been visited by demonic beings and right. You know, I knew when they were around like big time. You right, yeah. And I, got I I never I never got that feeling with him. I always thought about that part the most. I never felt threatened. I just felt like he wanted to be left alone. And my woods are actually very beautiful and I I, I understand why this thing wanted to go out there. I think it was just out there appreciating nature. I mean that's that's what I've gathered from this whole experience. Huh. And he did not want us to see his face. Oh, not at all. Right. I mean, I mean, we cornered this thing, and that's the only reason we saw what we saw. He was not expecting my friend to be out there at all. 
And, and so when it turned into the deer, it just walked off, and that's it? Or? Yeah, just walked off, and that, that was it. And we started to walk off because I have deer in my woods. I mean, that's normal. I've seen them in my yard. And Did so it look like a normal walked, deer? Yeah, he looked like a doe, like a doe, like a full-grown doe. No, no antlers, nothing, a full-grown doe. And it looked like a perfectly formed deer. Perfectly formed deer. From a going from a man a, a naked man, you know when you when you yep. first when you first said it that you said that your friend saw someone with clothes on, and then when yes, you come out there, there's it, it, it's a dude that's naked, and then I think he did that to hide in better and camouflage better. Maybe, yeah. That's what my theory is. Yes, and I and I I don't want to forget to tell you, to you and your audience, I do have a second witness to this. My friend Stephen, who stood next to me and saw it exact same thing and i'm he's in arkansas so i'm gonna go down there soon and i'm gonna i mean if you if you want for like an update in the future yeah. i mean yeah that'd be great man for sure i, mean, I, I believe i mean we, i mean I, I can just tell by the way you told the story to me you know a few times now um, well I, I appreciate it because nobody in my family believes me you you haven't had really many places to tell this you know i mean <laughs> who's gonna believe it you know well, yeah, it sounds nuts. I mean, if I was going to make up something, I wouldn't make that up. It sounds batshit crazy. I'm sorry for my language. I, I agree, man. But I, if I, know, yeah, I've told my own stories and they sound crazy, but uh, yeah. yeah. If I hadn't seen it, I would have never believed it. So, so when it walked off, then what did y'all do? We just kind of walked, walked um, back towards the main trail to my house, and then. In the woods, before we left the woods, we kind of snapped out of it. And we're like, dude, that, you know, we just saw a guy turn into a deer. So what actually what we did was I ran home and drew a picture of it. I don't have the picture. I could draw it again. I remember this like it was yesterday. But I draw a picture of the guy. And here's kind of an interesting part. My friend said he saw inverted. Like he saw the man turned around. What do you mean turned around? Now... Like, he said that where I saw his arms and head, he saw his back, and where I saw his back, he saw his arms and head. Um, <laughs> but Like, he, he it, saw it facing him, or and you saw it facing no, away? He he just kind of saw it almost like in a, in a mirror image, just kind of like, you know, kind of like if I laid down where my feet is, that's where he saw the head, and where my head is, is that where he saw the feet. Huh. It's it it just sounds so bizarre, but that's I kind of wanted to stick to what I saw, but he told me that right afterwards. He said I saw after he saw the picture I drew, he said I saw that guy completely in the other direction, laying there like that. So he was man, that would be, uh, that'd man, be this, interesting to see y'all's drawings because that's almost hard to even understand. Um, I, I I can I'm actually kind of an amateur artist and I could give you some drawings and uh, maybe attach them to an email or something. I'd be more than happy. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be good. You know, just to kind of give it an idea because that's right. that's hard to get. What 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 you're saying there? Inverted, um, inverted. You would think that it would be like faced the other way or right. it's almost like you're. Uh, is it right and left inverted or um yes is, right and left inverted yep okay that's what it was so when you were looking at it uh the head was to the right and then or that kind of <laughs> well, thing well to my per to my perspective his head was to the left okay so he saw it where the head was to the right yes that's okay, what he said yep cuz when i was picturing it i was picturing it as like the head was faced away well, it was more faced down, but it could have been faced away because all I saw was his hair. Yeah. Okay. So all I know is he, 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 this, this thing, I call him the deer man. That's what I've come to call him. Yeah, I know. It was, when, it, when I saw that email, dude, when you, 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 you titled it deer man, I was like, what? It's like, man, I got to get yeah. this. This is crazy. Wow. Man, I, this is fascinating. I, 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 you know, I sit at home sometimes and I, I think about this and I just do not have an answer to this day. 
Yeah, I mean, no one could have an answer to something like that, buddy. Uh, you know, so don't don't feel don't feel bad about that. Uh, that right. that's, okay. that's something that's supernatural. Um, I mean, that's the really only the answer you could get is that that something supernatural happened. Um, right. It's probably in the skinwalker type realm. Um, you know, because if a human changes into a creature, then the only really explanation there is is uh, the supernatural, um, uh, you know, powers that, that help a person do that. And, you know, and I, I, I had this one video where uh, um, a kid, when he was like, um, I think he was, he said he was like nine years old and he went to a place with his mom. And uh, there was a guy there who was rubbing this uh, Vaseline-like substance on himself. And it, it was gray. With He said it looked like there was hair in the Vaseline. And this guy was rubbing this Vaseline all over him, his body. And he was in boxer shorts sitting there in this recliner. And his eyes kept rolling back in his head and everything. And, and um, as it progressed, basically the dude ended up transforming into a dog man. And, uh, wow! Yeah, and 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 uh, his, his mom denied that that happened, and uh, but there it, it was like a, this this jar, uh, black jar with a gold lid, and uh, that's what the the stuff was in, you know, that that the dude was rubbing on himself, and later on when he got a little bit older, he got into his teens and stuff, he did this book report, and basically. Uh, he he was studying, trying to find you know uh, uh, something to do his book report on on myths. They were doing like book reports on myths and stuff, and legends and things like that. And he ran across the story of the black jar, the gold lid, and uh, um, being able to transform. And and uh, he's it's like that's exactly what I saw when I was a kid. And he said when that dude was rubbing that Vaseline on himself. Um, that looked gray with like hair in it. Um, he said the dude kept trying to hide the lid. It was like he was trying. He didn't want uh, him to see the lid. He kept hiding the lid under his leg. And uh, you know it was a, like this gold lid. And uh, and that's exactly wow. what was in the uh, story. What what he read in the the myth. The you know the the folklore deal or whatever. And, right. and uh, so he went and confronted his mom again and said, look, you keep telling me that that, that didn't happen, but uh, I remember when I, when I was a kid. But but it, wow. it really made me think about um, the whole skinwalker type thing um, because, you know, I, when I interviewed uh, J.C. Johnson, he talked about skinwalkers and what they had to do to be able to transform and Basically, they sacrificed a loved one or something like that, and yeah, I heard the same thing. Yep. Yeah, that that kind of thing. So and whatever the, and the, you saw, um, obviously, was a human ch changing into a animal, and it, it usually was done um, to spy. Um, that's what J.C. Johnson was talking about. Was a uh, um, the natives would uh, change into these creatures to to be able uh, to go spy on their uh, enemies, you know. Huh. Well, well, it makes sense. I mean, I'm I'm on Native American land. I'm on the land that was occupied by the Potawatomi tribe, and because I'm I'm three miles from Lake Michigan, so th this this is all Native American land. Because you know, as, as most know, they go by the water. Right. And uh, so I always felt that that was a connection. There usually is a Native American um, connection, like uh, burial mounds or something like that. And right. There, a lot of times there is uh, cornfields, Native American. Oh, yeah. And, one uh, of them around me. Yeah, and, and, and uh, one more. I can't think of what it is right now, but, uh, um, you know, there's kind of some... some a similar kind of uh, activity or, or similar type uh, connections between all these encounters when it comes to dog man um, and then when it comes to e well really even Bigfoot you know there's a lot of times there's a connection to some kind of something that happened in that area 
whatever, whatever right. it might be, you know, uh, wherever Bigfoot activity is big time, um, there's a lot of times there's some kind of something that happened in that area. Um, it, yeah, so it, it's it that kind of makes you want to make a supernatural connection. It's it's kind of hard not to, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because this definitely was not normal, and the. Funny thing is, is, this happened in broad daylight at ten in the morning. So I mean, right? If he, if that thing's out there, I mean, I God knows what else is. And oh, I just, All right? I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Is that the only thing you ever seen out there, or what? Well, that that was the most dramatic by far. But what? there, there's been other incidences of uh. Tell us about it, whatever else has happened, and uh, it might help well, connect the dots. Well, since since my friend Steven was out there, he, he stayed out there for a couple of months. He was having some trouble. So he was kind of my eyes and ears out there, and he was always out there. So he came back telling me something was out there mimicking me, you know, t- calling him with my voice and my whistles. He would come down out of his camp. It took him probably about 10 minutes to get from his camp in the woods. He came out to the trail, nobody there, so he figures I walked back to my house, and this is the area we saw the deer man in where he's at now. So he's walking down the main trail. He goes to my house, and I'm sound asleep. And needless to say, he told me he didn't want to go back to the camp. But, uh, it would, you know, he did, and he told me he was hearing other things, and see, I would really love it if in the future I could get him because he... He knows he can remember so many much more stuff that I cannot. But there's also uh, there's also well he there's been some UFO sightings out there. We've had some strange lights that have been around. We haven't seen any yet any beings or anything dramatic, but we've seen some some strange. Uh, they they he said that one time while we were having a fire in my backyard. He said that. A, a small version of a plane, probably about the size, I'd say, maybe of a shoebox, he said, flew up to him, took a picture, and flew off. Now, I didn't see that. I was sitting by the fire, but I was looking down, but I saw the flash. And he and my other cousin, who was with me, with us at the time, they jumped up screaming, what was that, what was that? And I was like, what did you guys see? And they're like, they told me it looked like a miniature version of a 747 about the size of a shoebox flew up to them, took a picture of them, it seemed. It was just a really bright blue flash and took off. A little 747. Wow. I mean, what? Yeah, the heck? That, that is yeah. That's insane. And I saw the flash. I was looking down at the ground, but I saw the flash. And, you know, I didn't pay it no attention. But. Right as that flash happened, my my friend Stephen and my other cousin Stephen, they're both named Stephen, they jumped up wigging out, saying, what the hell was that? And I have those guys have stuck to that story to this day. It never wavered. And so I, I you know, from other, the, all the other things I saw there, I, I'm, I, I believe them. I wonder, wonder why um, something would use that. I mean, because that... You know, that's not even, like, deceptive. It's, that's, like... Yeah, it's just plain weird, yeah, pretty I mean, much. Yeah, it's just weird, you know. You know a 747 oh. fly to, uh, flies up, and it's all small and everything, and bam, takes a picture. And <laughs> yeah, and, and they said it actually flew like a real 40, 747, like, came out fast, stopped, and then just, boom, gone. Man, that's very interesting. Right. And that came out of this, the very same patch of woods where, um, the, the very same section where we saw the deer man. Man, that, you got a strange uh, part of the woods there. <laughs> well, I, I could probably go on for another three or four hours about my woods, but I, I think you would love it if I could get a hold of Steven and maybe we could set up another interview for the future because he has so many more stories about my woods because he's staying out there even longer than I ever had. Oh yeah, that'd be wonderful, dude. For real. But and, I mean, what other and, stuff do you kind of remember that he talked about? Can you give us a well, gist? We, it's kind of like you know, little, the little stuff. You're always being watched. 
I've uh, I've been out there in my backyard late at night because in my backyard, my house is kind of like, you go in the front of my house and you can see the road, you can see the gas station, you can kind of see people walking. But if you go to behind my house, it's just, it, it goes straight into the woods because the woods is probably about, yeah, the tree line starts about 75, 80 yards from the back of my house. So the back of my yard is just completely pitch black. And it's just, it's just really creepy. So one night I went out there at 11 o'clock. I got home from work. It was a late night, real tired. So I go to my backyard to fill up this jug out of my spigot of my water, out of my water spigot in my back. And I swear to you, while I'm bending down, filling up this water bucket, something ran at me with a flashlight. It looked like a person with a flashlight, really bright, running at me full speed in my peripheral vision right, right to me. And so I look up, and there's nothing there. Immediately as I turn my head, there's nothing there. So that scared the crap out of me. So I just dropped my bucket and went inside. And I've heard laughing out there when I was by myself. And uh, always the feeling of being watched. Always the feeling of being watched. And so it's there's many more things I'm going to. I'm kind of like, my brain's kind of clogged. It's hard to remember so many things because it's been over the course of 20 years. But I'm going to go to Arkansas and hook up with my friend Steven in about a month. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to bring him on the show. Yeah, that, that would be great, dude. You know, I've had that feeling before where something ran up on me. and It's almost like you feel it running up on you. Like a... Uh, um, like footsteps, like pow, 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 you know, kind of deal. Uh, but right. You, you, you're saying you even seen a light coming up with the footstep pounds. Yeah. That happened about probably, I'd say about eight, man, about eight or ten years ago. Huh. Huh. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just, I mean, I'm going to be going there tonight, and uh, I'll tell you, when it gets dark, I, I just go in the house. I, I really don't hang outside anymore. Now, now, just to let you know that I, I'm not embarrassed to say where it is, and I, I will say where it is. It's in Zion, Illinois. And um, Zion, Illinois, it's a, probably about five minutes from the Wisconsin border. All right. And so I'm about an hour from where they saw the Beast of Bray Road. And I've heard so many stories up there by Walworth County and Kenosha County about, uh, I mean, they, they've seen a werewolf up there. Uh, these people have told me that personally. It, yeah, it's not, not that far apart from each other, those incidents. Huh. That's fascinating. I appreciate you coming, Sharon. Um, yeah, no get, problem. Get your buddy together and, uh, you know, and kind of prep him there and, and, and tell him that you would like to, have him come with you and, you know, talk about this stuff. Well, well I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, you know, I I'm thank you because I feel comfortable saying this and, you know, you know, on your show because I know I'm not going to be judged. And I know it's, you know, yeah, we, that's we, why you know, I, I believe you. And the audience will believe you, too. You know, for the most part, there, there are a few trolls <laughs> will come by, you know, but most people are right. Gonna, think hey man he's he, he he's saying what he saw and you know so you know don't don't worry about that too much um, all right <laughs> we 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 believe you buddy don't worry about that all right thank you i appreciate it yeah you will just hold on the line there uh everybody out there in youtube land uh thank you for listening uh we we really appreciate it and uh, i hope you found that uh to be uh fascinating story. God bless you, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.